sa iba kundi sa iyo at sa akin ang simula ng pagbabago panahon na para bumangon at paikutin muli ng tama ang mundo suliranin ng ating lipunan unti-unting magagawa ng paraan sa bagong siglo na ito ng ating mga buhay tayo'y magsama-sama Bigyang liwanag ang daan Maging gabay sa lipunang kailangan ng iyong kamay Halika na kapwa Pilipino Halika na kapwa Isko at Iska Taas kamay ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubo Sa sakip sa pamamayan Mula sa kahirapan Halika na kapwa mandirigma Magtagumpay kapwa isko at piska Taas kamay ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubok Huwag kang susuko Hingyan ang boses ang sikap na
Pasalong! Kod! Uloy! Ito! Tanggol! Kuloy! Ayang magiliw Kaya mas magsinahanan Alam ng puso Sa titik mo'y buhay Upang hinihang Kuya ka ng magiting Sa mandulupi Di ka pasisigil Sa nagatak tutok Sa simoy at sa langit Kung pangraw ay hinagang Good afternoon from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Ako po si Kathleen Tagaban and I will be your host for today's session. Welcome to Bayanihan Common Module Webinar Series. Isa itong inasyatibo ng NSTP Diliman Office to tackle three of the NSTP Common Module topics, National Security, DRRM, at Environmental Protection. Today we will have our Katatagan Webinar Session and we will talk about National Security. Pinabati din namin ang ating mga participants mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas through Zoom at sa NSTP Daliman YouTube Live. Bago po tayo magsimula sa ating programa, we would like to discuss a few house rules for our participants. First, we will prioritize questions gathered in the registration forms for a question and answer. For other questions, please type your questions in the chat thread or ask a question out loud by using Zoom's raise hand feature and wait for the host moderator to acknowledge you. Second, please indicate to whom your question is for. For example, to Professor Diman, how is NSTP conducted in your unit? And last, certificates will be awarded to those who request for one and comply with minimum requirements through the webinar evaluation form. The link for the webinar evaluation form will be announced at the end of the session. On that note, let us now open today's session and to give direction to today's program flow, here is Assistant Professor Denise Kilala, NSTP Diliman Office Director for the Agenda Setting. Thank you very much, Kat. Um, but before we proceed to the Agenda Setting, I would just like to recognize our speakers for the day, uh, Colonel Alcudia of um, the Armed Forces of the Philippines and um, Professor Medilio of the National Defense College of the Philippines. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'd also like to recognize all the NSTP directors, NSTP implementers who are joining us here in the Zoom meeting, and also all our participants, our student participa participants through YouTube um, Live. And again, before we proceed to the agenda setting, we just like to know where our participants are coming from. So if you are from the Luzon area, pwede ba natin makita yung, um, pwede ba gamitin ninyo emoji sign na thumbs up sign if you're from um, uh, from the Luzon area? Katulad po ng ganyan. Sige nga po. Tapos uh, invite ko na rin po kayo na buksan no, yung mga cameras ninyo for, just for now, just for now. Pakibuksan na lang po yung mga cameras natin. Tapos pakilagay lang po thumbs up sign if you're from Luzon. Tapos kukunan po kayo ng picture mamaya ng team natin. If you're from the Visayas, pwede po bang gamitin natin kasi nasa gitna kayo ng, uh, ng Pilipinas, yung heart sign naman po. Heart sign. Sige nga. Natin. Ganito po. Yan. Tapos, kapag ano naman po, kapag tayo naman ay taga Mindanao o nasa Mindanao ngayon, siguro yung clap sign na lang. Yan ganyan. Yan po ang gagamitin natin. Sige. Tapos, 
Uh, kung okay lang, kasi nga kukunan tayo ng picture ng ano ng, ng tech team natin, uh, baka pwede natin pakita muna yung mga, uh, pakita muna natin yung mga participants natin. And then in the count of three, so please open your, um, open your um, cameras first. Tapos, uh, yun nga po, count of three, kung nasaan po kayo, kapag ano, kapag uh, Luzon, thumbs up sign, kapag sa Visayas po, yung heart sign natin, tapos pabalakpak po tayo kapag nandito po tayo sa Mindanao. So, one, two, three. Tapos kapag nawala po kayo, pag nawala po yung emoji sign, balik lang po natin kasi kukunan po kayo ng picture ng ating tech team. Ayan. So mukhang marami po sa atin talaga na sa ano sa Luzon, madami din po sa Visayas. Wala pa ako nakikita na taga Mindanao na participants natin. Siguro maya-maya uh, mag-attend uh, 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 hahabol po siguro sila. Pati yung mga participants natin sa YouTube Live, yung mga estudyante natin can also do the same thing. So ano lang po tayo, uh, again, yung mga emojis po na gagamitin natin. Welcome po ulit sa ano sa Bayanihan, uh, the Common Module Topics Webinar Series. Um Can we start the presentation, please? So, um, for our agenda this uh, this afternoon, actually, um, this month and next month, po, um, next slide, please, is going to be about um, working together. It's going to be about working together. The inspiration for the Bayanihan is actually uh, what happened uh, and the challenges that the pandemic brought us. You know, the NSTP community, uh, we are not able to go face to face and this is very uh, challenging in particular for NSTP because we are asking our students to be involved in the community for our ROTC students we are required to do group activities and it's quite difficult to do that online but because of those um, challenges that were presented to us in the pandemic we had to be creative and the inspiration of Bayanihan started actually with um, a webinar on reimagining community engagement. What can we do to respond to these challenges? And then after that, we continued with another webinar. Um, next slide, please. We continued with the national service and the new normal. At this point in, um, in the pandemic, we opened the webinar to not only uh, NSTP implementers, NSTP coordinators in UP Diliman. We opened it to other um, NSTP implementers and Uh, directors from all over the Philippines. And then, um, next slide, please. And then together with the different constituent units of the UP system, we worked together to come up with NSTP online. We presented our experiences when it comes to the implementation of the NSTP online. So we had a um, session on ROTC, two sessions on CWTS, and another session on LTS. At this point, the NSTP Dilman office is no longer just sharing what, you know, the resources that we have, but we are also learning from the experiences of others. At, in NSTP Online, we were learning from our fellow uh, NSTP directors and NSTP teachers from the whole of the UP system. But then later on, next slide, please. When we organized the Kapayapaan webinar, um, our learning was no longer limited to the UP system. We learned from different universities like um, the MSU from the uh, Mindanao State University, from Bicol University, and from Miriam College. And I think that's the, you know, that's the, that's the inspiration. These are the inspirations for the Bayanihan. Um, next slide, please. So for the Bayanihan series, again, we, we, opened, um, we opened the webinar not only to NSTP teachers, implementers in UP Diliman, we opened it to everyone else in, in, um, in, in, in the country. So, kasama na po dito yung mga ibang SUCs natin, iba pa po natin na mga, um, mga higher educational institutions. And the choice of the three topics, yung katatagan, yung kahandaan, sa kalikasan, kaya po ito po yung mga napili namin ay dahil sa ito po yung mga common module topics na meron po tayong lahat. So, sa susunod po siguro yung mga iba pa po nating topics katulad ng um, drug education, pero sa susunod na po, sa sus siguro sa susunod na uh, taon na po yun. Next slide, please. Kaya po, dito sa webinar series natin, kaya po, ano ah, um, hindi lang po, aasaan po namin kayo na samahan po kami doon sa mga dalawa pa nating um, webinar sa, um, sa kalikasan po, tsaka sa kahandaan. Pero sa ngayon po, together, you know, together as, a, um, as, in, as an NSCP community, 
let us try to learn from the resource speakers. Um, we hope that we will be able to learn uh, the things that we should be teaching our students through our resource speakers, that's number one. Number two, as NSTP directors, um, I hope that you can share Cascade, uh, the ideas that you'll be learning from the webinar series to our NSTP implementers, our NSTP teachers. If you are an NSTP teacher, we hope that you can share this to your students. And then if you are a, an NSTP student, an NSTP teacher, an NSTP director, um, kindly share this to your immediate communities. Um, let your uh, let your family, friends know about what you will be learning from, from the webinar series. Lastly, lastly, we do hope that, you, that, that we can collaborate. You know, we can collaborate um, through this Bayanihan series. Um, I know that the NSTP law uh, required each university to implement the program. You know, we, we, we implement the program um, uh, as, as, uh, uh, as independent institutions. But if you go back to the idea of the NSTP law, we are being asked to talk about national security. We're tasked to talk about you know, the environment. We are tasked to talk about, um, about DRRM. And we know that while we can contribute as individual institutions in order to resolve, in order to manage, in order to mitigate you know, certain issues about all of these um, topics, we will have a better impact just think about the environment, a better impact when it comes to the environment if we work together. So, ano po, uh, sa tatlong sessions po na magkakasama tayo, I would like to invite you to, I mean, you have the list of um, participants. No? Makikita nyo naman yun do sa um, participants list natin. Ano po, kilalanin nyo po sila during the, the webinar. Um, kausapin po ninyo, lalong lana kung may idea kayo on how to respond you know, to the challenges that you will be hearing in the series. Tapos po, subukan natin ano, subukan po nating magbayanihan, subukan po natin mag-respond sa mga challenges na to bilang isang buong NSTP community. So thank you very much and I do hope that you will be learning from um, our resource speakers today. I mean, I'm quite sure that we'll be learning from our resource speakers. Maraming salamat ka. Maraming salamat, Director Kilala. Um, now let us move on to our first presenter. Our first speaker is from the National Defense College of the Philippines. Professor Robert Joseph P. Medillo is an Associate Professor II and the Acting Chief of the Academic Affairs Division of the National Defense College of the Philippines. He is currently the Master in National Security Administration Regular Course 57 Module Director for NSA 300 or Thesis Writing. He also served as an Assistant to the President on Research Matters from June 2021 to March 2022. Associate Professor Medillo teaches and conducts research on critical security studies, politics of security, security cooperation and foreign policy, and national security issues in developing countries. He holds a Master of Arts degree in political science from De La Salle University of Manila and is currently pursuing his second master's degree in administration at the University of the Philippines, Teleman. National College of Public Administration and Governance. Let us welcome Professor Medillo. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for that uh, generous introduction. Uh, good afternoon to all the participants of uh, this webinar session. I would like to acknowledge uh, my fellow speaker, our alumni, sir. Um, yeah, uh, let me also take this opportunity to thank all the organizers for inviting me. It is my pleasure and honor to be speaking in this webinar today. Um, if we can already share the slides, please. So my task uh, today is to discuss the country's external security challenges with a special focus on the South China Sea dispute. And hopefully um, later on, uh, we will be able to reflect and discuss as to how we can make our country's uh, national service uh, uh, training program more responsive to such external security problem. And uh, although I am speaking here as an academic, uh, let me formally begin with uh, a disclaimer. So for the record, the views and opinions that I am about to share in my presentation are mine alone and do not necessarily reflect 
or represent the views, opinions, or position of the National Defense College of the Philippines or the Department of National Defense. So for this slide, um, just to set the tone of our discussion today, um, it is imperative that we first define uh, national security in our own context, not in the Philippine context. So according to our uh, 2018 national security strategy, national security is um, the states or condition where in the nation's sovereignty and territorial integrity, the people's well-being, core values and way of life, and the state and its institutions are protected and enhanced. So if you observe, I highlighted some terms or concepts using two different colors, uh, blue for sovereignty and territorial integrity, and red for people's well-being, core values, way of life, and institutions. My purpose being is to show that by this definition alone, we can already see or gauge the two components of our national security. Sovereignty and territorial integrity for external security, people's well-being, core values, way of life, and institutions for internal security. In the academic discipline of security studies, we may refer to these terms as the referent objects of security or those that we must uh, or that must be protected and preserved against possible threats. So uh, just uh, for an example, for external security, uh, possible threats against our sovereignty and territorial integrity may come from foreign elements. While for internal security, possible threats uh, against our well-being, core values, way of life, and institutions may come from individuals or groups that use violence to undermine peace and order and our democratic government. Next slide, please. Our country's national security has its three pillars. Uh, the first is uh, safeguarding national unity, democracy, and social institutions. Um, it only means here that for us to realize or attain national security, we must uh, or we envision a country where all citizens share one Filipino national identity, okay? regardless of our ethnic, religious, cultural and ideological orientations. Of course, um, we've been described as a, a regionalistic no? uh, a, a country, no? regionalistic people. And um, wherever we come from, no, we, we showcase our own language. We have our own distinct uh, culture and uh, religious uh, uh, beliefs. And so uh, in order for us no, to attain national security or to realize national security, we must rise above these uh, uh, differences and look at this as you know, diversity that uh, we can be united no, despite having all of these uh, uh, cultural, religious, or uh, linguistic differences. Um, the, the second, which is uh, the focus uh, actually of this presentation is ensuring the security of the state and preserving uh, and protecting its sovereignty, territorial integrity, and institutions. So in, in our effort to fulfill this particular goal, uh, we are guided by some uh, important constitutional provisions in our 1987 constitution. Okay, so um, we have uh, defining our national territory based on international covenants. Uh, you would see uh, this reflected in our Article 1, Section 1. Uh, we renounce war as an instrument of national policy. No? So we are always for peace and we do not necessarily resort to war no? in, in trying to address our external security problems or in, in trying to address uh, regional and global security issues or conflicts at hand. We also uh, look at civilian supremacy over the military that is reflected in Article 2, Section 3. And the role, you know, the important role of the armed forces are, as protector of, of the people and the state, the, the pursuit of an independent foreign policy based on national sovereignty and national interest, 
our right to self-determination, um, freedom from nuclear weapons, and uh, lastly, the concept of a citizen army. So these constitutional provisions are the ones we consider and take into account you know, whenever we formulate uh, policies or strategies to address our external security challenges. The third and the last is the protection of properties, infrastructures, and keeping the people safe from all forms of threats here and abroad, as well as the creation of jobs for overseas Filipino workers and ensuring their safety. But then of course, uh, for the purpose of this discussion, we, I want you to focus on the second pillar, okay? Next slide, please. So again, uh, just to illustrate here that based on our definition and pillars of national security, we are looking at both its internal and external aspects or components. Next slide, please. So our focus, which is external security, is defined as a state where the country is free from external or foreign control and influence. And able to preserve its territorial integrity and sovereignty. And in trying to understand what are the possible factors that may threaten our sovereignty and territorial integrity or our external security as a whole, it is always imperative for us to scan okay, to our country's uh, external environment. So we need to gaze outside our borders in order to assess, okay? Uh, what uh, aspects no, or what factors may affect our pursuit of external security? Next slide. All right. So at the global level, we see the dynamics and effects of the United States and China rivalry to the Indo-Pacific region. It seems that two great powers are competing for influence in our part of the world. Now, while the United States remains the only global superpower at this point, China rises as its key challenger in terms of power and influence over countries uh, here uh, in, in the Indo-Pacific and in particular in Southeast Asia. Now, given China's uh, ever-growing economy and modern armed forces. So whatever tension or conflict that will come out of such rivalry between these two great powers will definitely affect our country's external security. Given that the United States is our treaty ally, we have the mutual defense treaty with the United States, while at the same time, we have China as our neighboring country. Another development in the international community that may have a domino effect in our region is the Ukrainian crisis. I'm sure you've seen this in many, many uh, news outlets. Uh, in the past months. No? So aside from its negative effects on the global economy that caused sudden increase in oil prices, some observers would point to the possibility of China trying to do the same thing, uh, in this case over Taiwan, no? which it claims as part of its sovereign territory. Now remember that uh, if in case, no, uh, this is hypothetical, but if in case this happens, uh, we have to remember that Taiwan is only about 376 kilometers from the Philippines, you know, uh, northernmost territory, which is Batanes. And it is only about 852 kilometers from the Philippine Rice or Benham Rice, northeast of Isabela province. So very, very important for us to consider uh, this possibility in trying to assess um, you know, our external security environment. At the regional level, we must pay attention to current regional arrangements at play that may affect peace and security in the Indo-Pacific and in Southeast Asia. So if you will recall, uh, if you recall five years ago, uh, four countries, you know, Australia, India, Japan, and the United States uh, revitalized their quadrilateral security dialogue. You know, we, some would call this in, uh, in, in, as, as, as quad, right? So in, in terms of uh, geopolitics, there are concerns that uh, these countries or this arrangement, you know, the Quad arrangement may be a tool of these countries to contain China. 
And uh, should China react or respond adversely, uh, then a conflict may occur at any time in our region. In uh, 2017, uh, this country started to develop a strategy for keeping uh, the critical sea routes in Indo-Pacific uh, free and open, which some see as a challenge to uh, China's sovereign claims over the entire South China Sea. Now remember that there's a nine dash line, China is claiming the entire um, uh, uh, territory. And uh, for these countries, we need no, the, the, the most important thing to do is to ensure that it will remain uh, open and free. No? Uh, just last year also, we have heard about the uh, AUKUS or the Trilateral Security Pact between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States for the Indo-Pacific region. So uh, the AUKUS leaders uh, reaffirmed their commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific similar to Quad and uh, more broadly to an international system that respects human rights, the rule of law, and the peaceful resolution of disputes uh, free from coercion. So um, against these developments in our region is our desire for ASEAN centrality. Okay, so just for uh, a brief background, when we say ASEAN centrality, it means that we're trying our best to uh, draw no, great powers and other major powers uh, uh, here in our region that the ASEAN will be the lead no, in trying to manage all the disputes and tensions among and between countries, rather than we uh, being drawn into a conflict no, between two great powers. So ASEAN centrality means ASEAN should be the center ASEAN should be the lead no, in, in, in trying to manage all these disputes and to address and discuss all our uh, regional security issues. Um, just, I think uh, it, the, the state visit started now. now if you see, uh, President Marcos decided to have his first uh, state visit to Indonesia. Now, Indonesia um, uh, houses the, 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 the uh, ASEAN um, uh, secretariat, okay? So it, it somehow, and Indonesia is seen no, uh, uh, as, as a leader no, in, in ASEAN. So you can see that, um, no, just to uh, make use of this as an example, it, it somehow gives us a strong statement no, that we really uh, prioritize the ASEAN over our uh, no, uh, relations or closeness with other great powers. So I think uh, to some extent, no, uh, the decision to uh, uh, have a uh, decision of President Marcos to have uh, his state, first state visit to Indonesia is somehow related no, or a testament to our desire for ASEAN centrality. So um, uh, we as a members of ASEAN would, again, would want to be the center of influence in the region rather than we being dragged into the different influences or interests of uh, great powers. Uh, therefore, uh, for the Philippines, it is in our best interest to maximize uh, the ASEAN as a regional platform uh, to pursue uh, our security agenda. Uh, in the past many years, we have always uh, enlisted the South China Sea issue as part of the ASEAN agenda. And it is also through the ASEAN that we are continuously you know, pushing for the conclusion of the code of conduct with, with China. At the national level, we see uh, skirmishes or uh, tensions in the West Philippine Sea uh, as, as direct threats to our sovereign claims and territorial integrity. Uh, recently, uh, these uh, skirmishes or tensions have also negatively impacted on the safety, uh, well-being, and um, livelihood of our fisher folks who have had experienced uh, intimidation from uh, the Chinese Coast Guard and other vessels. So, so in, 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 in gist, the way we will address this issue would of course depend on the foreign policy priorities of the current uh, presidential administration, okay? So that is our external security uh, environment. Uh, next slide, please. Now from uh, the broader external uh, environment, we now move to the identified, you know, the specifics Okay, the identified external security challenges of the Philippines as uh, provided by our national security policy from 2017 to 2022. 
So as you can see in this slide, uh, number one in the list are the uh, overlapping territorial claims and maritime domain issues. Okay, so how do we address uh, this uh, external security challenge? Okay, so the Philippines must ensure a good order within its sea boundaries and develop appropriate uh, maritime domain awareness and response force capability. Uh, the country, you know, we as a country, must also protect our maritime interest in the Benham Rice and Batanes Islands in the northern part of our national territory uh, and uh, Zamboanga, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi and Bongao Islands in the south. And um, again, this is important and to treat the West Philippine Sea issue as the foremost security challenge to the country's territorial integrity and sovereignty. Again, there are many uh, external security challenges that we have here, but again, you know, the West Philippine Sea issue is the, the foremost, you know, the most critical uh, external security challenge that we must uh, address. Number two in the list are global and regional geopolitical issues. I think I have uh, briefly discussed this earlier. Um, so uh, the United States remains a stabilizing force in our region. And it is the sole, you know, the only def defense ally of the Philippines. Uh, meanwhile, the rise of China generates policy concerns due to its territorial claims in the West Philippine Sea. Okay. Um, number three is, of course, the need for the Philippines to work closely with its other partners. So we have uh, South Korea, uh, Australia, uh, Russia, and India okay, that uh, we consider as important uh, partners in pursuing uh, regional security, regional peace and security. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so again, among the many external security challenges that the Philippines is facing, we now focus on the South China Sea dispute, you know, being the foremost uh, external security threat to our uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Okay, I'll just give a, a, a rundown of uh, historical background as to how this issue evolved as a primary external security issue and perhaps to look back at what happened in the past according to the policies and initiatives undertaken by our previous presidents. Okay, so um, the Philippines' efforts to assert uh, its claims in the South China Sea date back to the presidency of Ferdinand Edralin Marcos. Okay. So President uh, Marcos sent the military in two waves, you know, from 1970 to 1971, and from 1977 to 1980 to occupy okay, several features in the Spratly Archipelago. In 1972, the Marcos government officially incorporated the islets into uh, the uh, Philippines' westernmost Palawan province, no, which is called the Kalayaan Island Group. In 1978, it formally created both a separate Kalayaan municipality in Palawan, which I think is still existing up to this day. Uh, we have the municipality of Kalayaan uh, until now, um, and, and the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone. Okay, So as a result, uh, the Philippines had uh, control, okay? Uh, over nine of the Spratly's land features since the late 1970s. So we've been there since the 1970s. No? Um, next slide, please. Under the administration of President Fidel B. Ramos, no, in 1995, China occupied the mischief reef. Okay? Um, most scholars would, 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 and observers would, would, would agree that uh, at, the, at the particular time, uh, China saw an opportunity Okay, to occupy the mischief reef after uh, the Philippine Senate uh, voted no, against uh, or voted for the, the withdrawal of the U.S. bases okay, in, in, um, you know, here in, in, in the Philippines in, sometime in 1991. Okay, so China uh, began to uh, build light structures on, on the mischief reef. And uh, despite our uh, mutual defense treaty with the United States, uh, the United States remain neutral okay, in our uh, potential quarrel you know, with China and gave its ally no clear assurances of support. 
In uh, August of the same year, uh, China and the Philippines signed a bilateral code of conduct no, to curb or at least manage uh, the tensions uh, going on no, in the aftermath of the mischief reef incident. Although, again, uh, this was uh, short-lived because China continued uh, with its um, uh, occupation and presence no, in, in some areas in the South China Sea. Um, Fid uh, President Fidel Ramos uh, responded by launching the AFP modernization program. But of course, uh, the rest is history no? due to uh, mismanagement and the impact of the Asian financial crisis on the government finances. Uh, this was not fully uh, realized. And up to now, we are uh, in our best effort to really push for uh, the modernization program. Next slide. So the dispute continued uh, towards the uh, administrations of President Estrada and uh, uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Uh, President Arroyo even entered into a joint marine seismic undertaking agreement with China and Vietnam uh, to somehow you know, use this as a tool to uh, you know, find a common ground as to how we can um, cooperate with one another to shelve you know, uh, those that are contentious issues in the South China Sea. Okay? So instead of focusing on our overlapping claims and sovereignty issues, we now uh, try to look at this particular area as an area where we can, in fact, cooperate you know, for development. But of course, it faced a controversy. You know, um, if, if given the opportunity, then we can have a perhaps separate discussion you know, as to what transpired uh, during this particular time. Fast forward to uh, President Aquino III, another Scarborough Shoal incident happened in 2012. Okay. So there was a standoff between um, uh, China and the Philippines. Okay. Uh, China uh, you know, uh, deployed more naval assets, you know, leading to a month-long standoff you know, between the two countries. The United States tried to broker a simultaneous withdrawal from both sides. Uh, but again, it did not materialize, which led to the uh, later on no, in the filing of uh, the arbitration case against China um, under the uh, Annex 7 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. I'm sure uh, our young participants here are still uh, familiar. No? It's still fresh in your memory that in July 2016, we won actually no, uh, uh, the, the arbitration uh, ruling. Okay, um, so the court finally delivered a ruling in the Philippines' favor. Uh, the central finding okay, was that China's nine dash line and assertion of historic rights have no basis in international law. Okay. Um, in, in August 2016, okay, come the Duterte administration, uh, President Duterte sent uh, former President Ramos no, as a special envoy to Hong Kong to, to set a less confrontational course in the South China Sea dispute. Now, others would see that the filing of the arbitration case was somehow confrontational towards China. And so we need other mechanisms on how to engage uh, uh, China you know, on this issue. Um, but at that time, uh, we were distracted by internal challenge, challenges. Now, the Marawi siege happened. And in uh, 2017, we chaired the, the ASEAN, the Philippines chaired the ASEAN uh, uh, meeting, but uh, it was not, no, unfortunately, it was not used by uh, President Duterte to bring no, or to enlist the South China Sea issue as part of the agenda. No? Again, because of his effort to really uh, build confidence uh, with China and to revitalize you know, the, the relationship between these two countries. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. All right, so now the question that uh, most of you may be asking at this point is, so what? Okay. Aside from those that have already been said and done, what value does the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea really have for us Filipinos? Okay. So herein, I provide a multidimensional uh, way of uh, identifying the importance of the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea for the Philippines, national interests, and even the ordinary Filipinos in particular. 
So politically, Clayman State's aggressive pursuit of territorial claims would undermine the Philippines' territorial integrity and sovereignty, as well as ASEAN centrality in managing regional disputes. Okay, I, I, I guess this is self-explanatory and was already expounded earlier on. In terms of its economic dimension, uh, fishing in Bajo de Masinlok or Scarborough Shoal has been a traditional occupation for centuries for Filipino fisher folks. It has been their traditional fishing ground. Okay. Also, the South China Sea is said to, uh, to have you know, vast oil and gas reserves that may sustain uh, our country's current and future energy supply needs. For its sociocultural aspect, which is, I think this has not always been highlighted you know, in discussions about the South China Sea dispute. And I think uh, you as NSTP teachers or directors may contribute. Okay. The, the Philippines is essentially a maritime nation. We are surrounded by waters. So failure to preserve such identity, you know, being a maritime nation, will have generational effects to Filipinos you know, in terms of nationalism, uh, ecological heritage, economic history, as well as our historical ties with maritime Asia as a whole. In China, they are using the South China Sea dispute now to trigger nationalism, okay? And we, you know, being a maritime nation, should also contextualize our foreign relations you know, in terms of that identity. We are a maritime nation, okay? So I think it, it needs to be inculcated in the minds of our students, you know, this idea, you know, this particular identity. You know, we have... Uh, different ethnic background, you know, languages. We are called regionalistic. Okay, we can be divided in so many ways. You know, in so so many ways, it's a diverse country. You now, despite this idea of the Filipino, but there's one thing that should unite us, regardless of all of these uh, differences. You know, we are a maritime nation. Everywhere you go in the Philippines, you will see. You no, know, you are surrounded. We are surrounded by waters. Okay. So there, okay, I think it's very important that even in the, in, in, in the secondary education, in the primary education, now this should be taught and inculcated in the minds of our youth. Okay? I, I can't remember uh, uh, a discussion, a distinct discussion in our uh, Hekasi or Sibika at Kultura or uh, Araling Panlipunan. I, my, I, I don't know, but it, it might be, my memory may be wrong, but I can't recall no, any uh, distinct no, a discussion on our identity as a maritime nation. No, of course, we discussed no, the Philippines geography and all so on and so forth. But there is, uh, no, it, it, it needs to be emphasized and contextualized, okay? That it should uh, shape okay, the way uh, we, we, we conduct our foreign relations with other countries. Okay, uh, next slide. So for its techno-scientific dimension, the South China Sea dispute is seen as key driver or an impetus for the Philippines to boost its, its, its defense technology program for maritime patrol, surveillance, and a modern Navy. Okay, so because of this issue, it has now become a, 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 you know, a driver you know, or a push for us to really uh, take seriously you know, efforts to modernize our armed forces, particularly our Navy. Otherwise, we will not be able to uh, you know, consistently patrol you know, our maritime borders. In terms of uh, the environment, um, of course, uh, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, as well as continuous reclamation of islands threaten ecological balance in the South China Sea, and thus, you know, in effect, uh, would also uh, you know, uh, negatively affect uh, the Philippines coastal communities. And lastly, under the military dimension, we uh, see that while armed conflict you know, directly involving the Philippines is unlikely, okay, we see this far from happening, uh, there is a growing potential for incidents at sea to escalate. So it is necessary to prevent casualties for both civilians and military personnel at sea. Okay. There might not be war, but 
incidents, no small incidents or accidents in this particular area may escalate into something uh, that would involve you know, the military between different countries. Okay, next slide. So what can be or should be done to address the South China Sea dispute uh, you know, from the Philippines point of view, from our own point of view? Okay, so uh, the country's national security policy uh, provided for prompt uh, strategic objectives as follows, you know, de develop defense capability, pursue rules-based regime, uh, pursue a DOC and COC, the declaration on the conduct of parties in the South China Sea and the code of conduct in the South China Sea and pursue maritime boundary delimitation. Okay, so to develop our defense capability, we must enhance our cooperative uh, maritime security and defense arrangements with other countries and pursue the enactment of laws on defense modernization. Uh, to pursue rules-based uh, regime in the South China Sea, uh, we must consistently gather international support and respect for the arbitration award, which we won you know, in July 2016. Okay, that should become or be promoted as the basis as to how we will manage and settle our disputes in this particular area. We also need to continuously engage China individually and as ASEAN as a whole to conclude the, the declaration on the, uh, uh, the conduct of parties and the code of conduct in the South China Sea as a confidence building mechanism to prevent armed conflicts. Now, just for the knowledge of uh, our participants, no code of conduct simply means that there has to be a, a set of rules no, that will guide uh, the actions or behavior of parties no, or countries uh, surrounding the South China Sea. Okay. So this is uh, our way of trying to ensure that no incidents will escalate into an armed conflict. So this is very important that we regulate no, the actions or behavior of states in this particular area. And lastly, we must pursue maritime boundary delimitation by enacting laws on maritime zones, archipelagic sea lanes, and other matters pertaining to our commitment and obligations under international law, particularly the UNCLOS. So the role of the Philippine Congress is crucial in this regard. Okay? Because as you can see, most of the strategic uh, objectives can be achieved by truly uh, legislating you know, these efforts. You know, uh, first, you know, which is uh, what should be done really. You know, you know, we can't do anything uh, beyond you know, what is being legislated. You know? So the role of the Philippine Congress is very important. Um, next slide. Now, no, uh, in retrospect, okay, after discussing all these things about the South China Sea dispute, no, how can we make use of our NSTP? Sorry, I think it's redundant. No, how, how can we have a responsive NSTP uh, that could somehow uh, enable us to contribute okay, to our effort no, to, to advance our national interest in the South China Sea, you know, to ensure that we will realize or protect our external security in this particular uh, area. Okay, so uh, under the law, uh, the NSTP has two uh, main objectives. Okay, to enhance a uh, civic consciousness. Okay, I guess this can be uh, particularly realized in the LTC and the CWTC, and second, uh, defense preparedness, which is I think um, under the ROTC. Uh, program. Okay, so this is my um, reflections. No, as I was trying to marry uh, recent developments in the South China Sea, uh, our uh, policies, our strategies, okay, its importance to the Philippines, and okay, the need for us to uh, take advantage of this NSTP, you no, know, for our youth to somehow be able to contribute. Okay, or at least to understand or take uh, you know, very simple actions you know, to, to, to help our country in addressing the South China Sea dispute. Okay, for one, uh, teach and promote maritime domain awareness among the youth. So we need to teach our students on the uh, environmental, economic, political um, effects you know, of 
the developments happening in maritime Asia, particularly in the South China Sea. We must be able to teach them, we must teach them that whatever happens in this particular region would have you know, uh, direct effects okay, to our society, to our political life, to our environment, and to our economy. I think that is very important. No? Awareness is important. Now, this is the first step okay, for them to realize the value or the importance of this particular external security issue. Perhaps we may uh, incorporate, I don't know how NSTP is being implemented at this point in time, uh, but if not yet there, maybe we can design a field visit programs to coastal communities, especially those directly affected by the dispute. Okay, Maybe we can you know, uh, go beyond the four corners of our classroom and try to uh, engage you know, with uh, fisher folk communities being affected by this particular issue. Um, I would like to also suggest to include geopolitics and international relation topics um, in our NSTP lectures, as well as uh, the, the main, um, you know, the, the broad strokes of the NSP, the national security policy, national security strategy, and the national defense strategy. Okay? But of course, we need to train first our NSTP teachers and directors as to how to effectively uh, incorporate and teach these topics in our NSTP. Now for, de for defense preparedness, uh, I, would, you know, uh, I would suggest you know, to encourage really a youth participation and support to ROTC, particularly with emphasis on naval studies as well as other non-combat military skills that are necessary in times of crisis, okay? Uh, I, I think uh, when you talk of military training, you're not just talking about combat skills, okay? Many people forget that there are non-combat military skills that are very important and very useful for the youth, no? that they can use in times, whether in times of crisis or even in their everyday lives. Okay. So there, and of course, a uh, support mandatory ROTC, okay, provided, so there's a caveat, provided a thorough review and reforms are institutionalized and it is anchored or oriented towards external security. Uh, one of the contentions that we hear uh, in the media, especially those from uh, other groups who really oppose mandatory ROTC is that it's like we're teaching our youth of you no, know, we're teaching them violence against their fellow Filipinos. But that is because at the present, you no, know, the, the, the role of our armed forces is more leaning towards internal security. Okay, that is addressing communist insurgency, local terrorism, and also it would appear that our you know, we're teaching them to we're teaching them to fight you know, their fellow Filipinos. But in, uh, in, in, in principle, in reality, the role of the armed forces is really for external security. So I think as long as you know, the, orientation, you know, the, the orientation is really towards, uh, the orientation of our armed forces is now leaning towards external security, then I think um, we need our OTC really to be mandatory, okay? Because uh, again, as we can see in our in the, in the in the earlier part of our discussion, the global and regional security situation is very uh, complex and volatile. Okay, we, we don't uh, know. It's it's very difficult. You know what will happen next? You now things happens very fast. So we really need to be wary and uh, prepared. You no, know, in times of threats. You no, know, uh, against our you know uh, borders. Okay. So, um, uh, and lastly, uh, I think we also need, no, similar to what I proposed uh, under enhancing civic consciousness, is to design field visit programs to the country's defense and security organizations. When we talk of national security, when we talk of external security, we're not just uh, looking at the armed forces. There are other uh, organizations that collaborate and help our armed forces in realizing you know, uh, external security in particular and national security in, in general, okay? So aside from the armed forces of the Philippines, perhaps 
They may have uh, visits to our mother agency, the Department of National Defense, uh, we in NDCP being the Educational and Training Bureau of the Defense uh, Department. We have the National Security Council. Uh, we have the, the, the Philippine Coast Guard. You know, these institutions are not necessarily part of the armed forces, but are important uh, partners, actors in um, pursuing our interest in the South China Sea. Next slide, please. So I guess uh, that concludes my presentation uh, this afternoon. I really hope you learned uh, something from me. Uh, these are my references. And uh, again, thank you. And I look forward to your questions uh, later this afternoon. Thank you for your presentation, Professor Medillo. It really is a very exciting opening for our participants. Again, a reminder to our participants participants on Zoom and YouTube Live. If you have any questions or comments about the presentation, you can use the chat box in Zoom or YouTube. And once again, we will have a question and answer session with our speakers later in the program. Okay, without further ado, our next speaker is from the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Service and Retirees Affairs, J9 of the, of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Colonel Ronald Jess S. Alcubia of the Philippine Army, was a biology major in UP Diliman when he entered the Philippine Military Academy in 1988. He has served as assistant commandant of two UP ROTC units, Diliman in 2007 and the Spaniards in 2016. He is currently involved in reserve force development at the general headquarters in Camp Aguinaldo. Let us all welcome Colonel Alcudia for his presentation. Uh May I check if uh, presentation is visible? To Professor Kilala and uh, UP Diliman NSTP office and to Catherine, thank you for the introduction. In the Philippines, uh, I was requested to uh, make a presentation to cover the following topics. Uh, the internal security situation, how NSTP students can contribute, and how the program contributes to defense preparedness. Uh, similar to Professor uh, Idilio, uh, I would like to make a disclaimer that the contents of this presentation are collated from uh, other presentations uh, made available to us at the general headquarters. And I will be acknowledging such as I make my presentation. Uh, na mention kanina ni uh, Professor Kilala that uh, how the common module is implemented by higher education institutions. Uh, meron kanya kanya silang uh, paraan kung paano nila gagawin ito. Uh, my understanding is this is uh, what is covered in the. 25R common module, I'm uh, showing a snapshot of how NSTP is uh, conducted. Uh, makikita po natin dito on the right side, that is the ROTC component. On the left side, how the CWTS and the LTS program components uh, should be implemented. But before that, there is a 25-hour uh, common module that everyone needs to undergo. Now, uh, there was a uh, revival. Uh, previously, bago pumili yung ating mga estudyante ng kanilang NSTP component, uh, kailangan muna nilang daanan itong 25-hour common module. 
But in the revised IRR, uh, it is uh, different. for the common module. Uh, and this was because higher education institutions had a problem administratively when you choose the program component in the middle of the semester. Ngayon, uh, and uh, it was necessary for us to come up with a NSTP orientation for the graduating senior high schools. So we were able to partner with them at, uh, regarding that no, in 2021. Ngayon, uh, I would also like to acknowledge this part of my presentation, which is taken from the National Security Council proposal. In third presentations for the common module, I was part of that uh, technical working group. So the National Security Council was requested to come up with a standard uh, module on uh, national security. So in 2019, ito yung some slides that I'll be sharing with you are taken from the draft of the NA. Presented earlier by Professor Medillo in the National Security Park. Covering also some parts of what uh, Professor uh, Medilius uh, presented. Uh, kanina, ito yung karamihan na na-cover din yan, no? Although the focus was on the West Philippine Sea, some of the external... Uh, ...developments also within our region and even outside of our region. Na-mention niya yung uh, Ukraine. Uh, hindi wala pa yon dito sa slide na to kasi this is a 2019 proposal. But uh, in the internal environment, ito yung mga nakalista that we had uh, wanted to include in the common module of uh, the NSTP. And there were also other strategic issues that we wanted to cover. Now, you will notice that uh, even the didn't change all that. So I believe that it's a means armed forces, even when we uh, uh, developed the defense planning guidance in 2021, uh, malaki tumaas yung uh, level of uh, uh, challenge when it came to uh, pandemics and uh, uh, biohazards. But for the purposes of uh, my lecture this afternoon, I will be covering the internal uh, security situation, focus on these two groups, the communist terrorist group and local terrorist groups. Now, earlier uh, in the unang slide, meron kayo nakita tong secessionist movements. Uh, why are they not here in this slide? Uh, because of the peace agreements of the government and the Moro National Liberation Front and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, uh, in the armed forces, we categorize them as peace-inclined armed groups. And this is uh, to give uh, direction or to give uh, some uh, promotion. Process of normalization uh, in keeping with the agreements uh, with these two groups. So... Now, uh, ito, marami na rin kayong naririnig dito. No? Uh, the communist terrorist group is actually a triumvirate of uh, three groups. Uh, the communist party itself was uh, provides the leadership. This was established in 1968. Uh, this was uh, followed by the organization of an armed group, the New People's Army, and then later the creation of a united front. Uh, for United Front building, the National Democratic Front. 
Now, there are three processes by, by which they achieve their intentions. Uh, this includes the building of the party. Uh, ito yung pag-create or pagbubuo ng mga sangay ng partido sa iba't ibang lugar, sa uh, communities, in uh, organizations, places of work, uh, places of study, and uh, places where they need to generate manpower and also adherence to the boss. Now, there is also another process which is called army building. So uh, if you hear in the reports, ito yung mga sinasabing guerrilla bases. This is where the armed group is uh, thriving. This is where they generate the manpower for uh, the armed revolution. Now, there is also another part this is United Front Building, and this refers to uh, the different actions na above ground, which include uh, legal mass organizations, underground organizations. Uh, ISW is International Solidarity Works. This includes uh, alliances with uh, groups uh, in, uh, in uh, Europe, for example, and in other countries uh, for some partnerships to advance uh, the political agenda. Uh, of course, there is also the electoral struggle. Uh, there was the hope in uh, in the repeal of Republic Act of the anti-subversion law. Uh, there was a hope that uh, the Communist Party would engage in uh, the electoral struggle. Uh, yes, that this is one part of the struggle, but uh, the means did not end in terms of the objective of weakening the state and the seizure of political power. And the primary form of achieving this objective is through the violent armed struggle. Now, uh, over the years, uh, what we have seen is that the ideology has been lost, that there is uh, a transition right now. It has evolved already into an organization that is mostly organized for uh, extortion activities. Uh, We've seen this in our reports, uh, and uh, this is felt in the ground in many of our areas. Mas kakaunti na ngayon because of the reduction of their capabilities. But uh, let me just show you uh, some data on uh, how we see the resource generation is uh, uh, conducted. No? Uh, for example, itong uh, mga government projects, uh, tutu po ito kasi I was a battalion commander here. Uh, right now, I'm in Davao. Uh, merong mga lugar dito because it is published in the government website how much a project costs. So constructors who uh, do their project already cannot avoid the percentage that uh, is levied on these projects kasi uh, alam ng mga collecting officers, kumbaga, the resource generation, how much they will. small industries. Now, uh, kanina sinasabi ni uh, Professor Medilo, what is it, the, uh, the so what? No, uh, I think it's important for our NSTP facilitators and also our students to recognize that the youth and student is a very vulnerable sector. Uh, even in the doctrine and in the constitution of the Communist Party, they see the youth and student as a as an, uh, as an instrument that can really advance the cause of the revolution. Uh, and it's well documented. Uh, we do not need to go into the specifics. Kung uh, ano yung mga nasayang na buhay uh, dito sa, uh, sa pakikibaka na ito. And so perhaps uh, what we can ask of our NSTP uh, uh, facilitators and our students is to be aware uh, of the recruitment schemes of how these things happen. Uh, uh, we, we draw the line on the armed struggle. Uh, as mentioned, itong mga advocacies of dissent, itong mga organizations uh, and others, these are not considered uh, uh, acts of terrorism against the government. Uh, it is only when uh, it is intended to uh, uh, destroy uh, Post death, yun yung mga, yun yung mga uh, nakadefine dito sa ating uh, batas that constitute these acts of uh, terrorism. Uh, what I would like to 
present here now is ano na yung naging approach ng ating gobyerno. Uh, because we recognize that uh, it involves uh, political, diplomatic, legal, and military actions. What the government did in 2018 was create a national task force to end the local communist armed conflict. We'd like to focus on the armed conflict. Kasi doon na pag na-elevate na to that stage yung struggle, uh, this is what really constitutes a threat to national security. So you will see na yung ginawa ng ating gobyerno was to address the different uh, root causes that uh, have been the grievances and that uh, breed the discontent that uh, allowed the uh, insurgency to thrive. Uh, we, have, we have had successes here. We've seen the reduction of... Uh, Life, uh, a comprehensive local integration program, uh, providing an avenue for those who are in the armed group to seek a new life. No, uh, I believe the amnesty program is still pending in Congress. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not certain if this was approved in the last Congress. But uh, marami tayong mga initiatives right now, especially itong uh, local peace engagements that have been successful in engaging and uh, involving our local chief executives to bring back uh, into the mainstream and a new new life, no? bagong buhay dun sa mga gustong uh, magbalik loob. Uh, there is now, uh, I'll also now turn to the other threat. Uh, ito, this is... Uh, mostly in uh, the southern Philippines, uh, and I'm talking about the local terrorist groups. Uh, we have identified three, pero nagsasanga-sanga kasi yan. Ano? Kaya makikita ninyo yung uh, Daula Islamiya, there are many groups, splinter groups, that are actually inspired by foreign terrorist organizations. Uh, if you recall the 2017 uh, incident in uh, Marawi, which was led by the Maute group, uh, inspired yon by a foreign terrorist organization because they wanted to gain recognition uh, and they wanted uh, to gain, aside from the recognition, it will be the financial support from an international terrorist organization. So these are the three groups right now that are in our, uh, our uh, list of uh, local terrorist groups, uh, the Abu Sayyaf, the Bangsamoro, uh, Islamic Freedom Force, this is mostly in uh, central Mindanao. And itong uh, Daula Islamiya is in uh, the areas of uh, uh, Lanao, uh, Zamboanga, and also in the uh, areas of Basulta, no? yung sa Basilan, Sulod, Tawi-Tawi. Now, uh, anong, uh, ano yung strategy ng ating gobyerno? Because this, uh, this is a organization that also promotes their own socio-economic and political uh, agenda. So uh, some of the identified vulnerable sectors uh, are as listed. Uh, communities, we have, uh, uh, meron, ta meron tayong mga experiences, yung ating mga nahuhuli, yung mga nakakulong while, while they are undergoing uh, uh, the process of our justice system. Uh, the recruitment happens inside our jails. That's the where the, the radicalization happens. Uh, of course, uh, there are those who would like to see this as a religious conflict, promoting it as a, a conflict uh, between uh, clashing uh, uh, religious uh, uh, beliefs. Uh, learning institutions is there. Nakikita natin to, not only in schools, but also yung, yung ating uh, madras system. Uh, this can be a vulnerable uh, sector to these kinds of uh, recruitment and uh, radicalization. Of course, itong uh, social media, itong overseas Filipino workers, uh, meron tayo mga documented cases nito. Uh, when our Filipino workers go abroad, especially in the areas of uh, Middle East, uh, that is where the radicalization happens. And so when they come back into the Philippines, that's where they... Uh, kumbaga, natanim na sila dito and they, they start their own uh, recruitment efforts to expand the organization and to uh, build on their recruits. 
Now, the Philippine government follows the four pillars of the counter-terrorism strategy. And so our approaches are uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, we look at a whole-of-nation approach. Uh, it means, I mean, it's not just the government who, who uh, develops the program to address the root causes of this, pero involved din dito yung ating private sector and uh, uh, civil society organizations. Uh, looking at how the convergence of the stakeholders will be able to address the push and pull factors. No, uh, Let me show you the framework. Uh, ito yung framework ng ating approach on, we call it PCBE. Pag naririnig ninyo yon sa mga announcement ng ating security forces. PCBE is uh, preventing and countering violent extremism. So, napakita kanina on yung mga sectors na vulnerable and what are the reasons why they join, no? natutulak sa kanila at ano yung mga sinasamantala na mga nagre-recruit sa kanila, particularly yung mga kahirapan, yung mga disillusionment with, uh, with uh, a policy of government, minsan uh, away ng mga pamilya, yun ang mga nagiging reason kung bakit uh, may mga na, napupunta sa ganitong bagay. And uh, how do we address it? Uh, again, it's a convergence of the different interventions by the different uh, groups, not just of government, but uh, we have seen the value, valuable support of uh, civil society organizations who provide uh, the expertise and the bridging no, between the different groups on how we promote our de-radicalization programs. Now, uh, let me now go to ano bang relevance ng ating NSTP dito sa mga challenges na pinakita natin. Uh, the National Service Training Program, uh, kaya ako pinakita itong slide na ito because uh, when the revision of the IRR was made in 2021, one of the main drivers for that, aside from the enhancement of the Reserve Officer Training Corps Program, is itong NSRC. And I hope our NSTP uh, directors uh, are, uh, would read into the, the law and also in the publications of the directives. Yung ating mga graduates ng Civic Welfare Training Service and the Literacy Training Service, just like the ROTC, they are reservists. They have serial numbers issued by the Commission on Higher Education and they form part of the Civil Defense Reserves of the Office of Civil Defense. Uh, and ito kasi yung nawala for the past 20 years, I think. Uh, this was part of the law in 2022 when NSTP was passed. But 20 years after, uh, when we were looking for, sana ba tong NSRC natin na ito? During the pandemic, uh, we were looking for uh, groups that would help in uh, the quarantine control points and in other uh, aspects of the COVID response that were needed, uh, it would have been a very big help kung itong ating NSRC na ito ay ating na-organize. But now this has been recognized by uh, by the national government, CHED, TESDA, and uh, the Office of Civil Defense uh, are now into this process of uh, developing uh, our records and accounting for all our graduates. Now, uh, this is uh, what is stimulated in the NSTP. So, yung ating... I'm sorry to have my interruption. Huh? Anyway, uh, Section 2 of uh, 9163 uh, recognizes that the youth is the most valuable resource of the nation. And so uh, it, in, it strives to inculcate uh, the ideals of patriotism, nationalism, volunteerism, and the prescribed programs are there to motivate, train, organize, and mobilize our students, our graduates, for the different programs in the service of the nation. Now, uh, kanina na introhan na rin po ito ni uh, Professor uh, uh, Medilio, uh, what is the importance of our ROTC? Uh, I'm not trying to uh, promote right now the mandatory ROTC because that is not the, man the purpose of my presentation. But uh, we just have to see the different uh, socio-political developments in our region that will really require the Philippines to have a strong armed forces. Uh, 
Uh, but because uh, we cannot maintain a big force, what we have is a small uh, force compared to our population. And then we need to have a big reserve that can be mobilized as a base for expansion. So na mentioned na rin ito ni Dr. Uh, Di Professor Midilio Kanina. Uh, of course, we have uh, problems here, uh, a territorial dispute in the West Philippine Sea. We have uh, a uh, looming, uh, it's, a, it's a long problem, no? matagal na ito, uh, here in the cross-strait relations between uh, China and Taiwan. Uh, we know that there is a dream that uh, in 2049, there is a, 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 a dream of a unification. Uh, we don't know if uh, how that will be achieved or if that will be achieved, but we are uh, uh, surely be affected. Uh, meron tayong, there's a problem between uh, China and Japan because there is a territorial dispute also uh, in the East China Sea. We have problem in uh, the Korean Peninsula. Uh, kaya rin tayo maapektuhan yan. And mainly because we have uh, nationals in these uh, areas that can be affected. We have not uh, placed here the Ukraine crisis. Uh, but uh, in the horizon, hindi naman ito talagang uh, isyong uh, 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 mag-e-erupt. No? But uh, we have to recognize that there is an issue because of the uh, claim of the Philippines to Saba. Meron pa rin, uh, hindi pa rin yan resolved. No? Now, uh, and that is the reason why we need to have a strong uh, defense reserve. Uh, and I will relate that to the, our ROTC program, which is the main source of the armed forces of the Philippines for its reserve. Now, for our CWTS and LTS graduates, nasabi ko nga, uh, they form part of our National Service Reserve Corps, which is the civil defense reserve of uh, the government. Now, uh, the, ge the, the geographic location of the Philippines uh, is more than uh, enough to convince that we need to have a strong uh, reserve or a strong uh, preparedness for disasters and calamities. We are located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, there are there's a uh, fault system all over the country except for a few islands. No, the recent one was in uh, Abra. Uh, I think two months ago, na nangyari yon. And then uh, we are also in the Typhoon Belt. No, so all these things considered. Uh, isama na rin natin yung mga man-made uh, disasters natin, mga calamities. Uh, truly, we are a very disaster-prone country. And so, uh, towards this end, uh, yung ginawa ng ating revised implementing rules and regulations is to emphasize not just the training, but what happens to our graduates. So nakalagay dyan sa Section 11 of the law, ang mga graduates ng ating Reserve Officer Training Corps program uh, form part of our citizen armed force. Uh, and our non-military components form part of our NSRC. Now, isang intervention na ginawa ng ating IRR is the creation of school-based units. Dati kasi, kapag graduate na ng isang taon yung ating mga NSTP, uh, wala na silang engagement uh, and uh, the mindset has been uh, they have already complied with their NSTP requirement then they can graduate. Uh, lost in that uh, loss in the program is that it is a reserve development program uh, not only for the AFP and the defense sector but also for our local governments. So doon sa IRR Kapag nag-graduate na yung ating mga NSTP after the, the completion of the one year, uh, part of the new provisions is the creation of school-based units. So yung sa ROTC, meron tayong school-based ready reserve unit where uh, our ROTC units will continue to account, uh, provide the uh, training uh, and updates on uh, reserve force development uh, policies doon sa ating mga ROTC graduates. Ganun din yung ating CWTS and LTS graduates. Pero tayo mga school-based uh, NSRC units. Uh, I'm just not sure this is under the Vice President for Academic Affairs uh, concern. But uh, uh, we are waiting for the CHED implementing guidelines or the memorandum order regarding this. Ngayon, pagka-graduate na ng ating mga studyante, when they go back to their respective communities, 
then our ROTC graduates go to the mobilization centers of the AFP, whether that is the Army, the Air Force, or the Navy. And then yung ating mga CWT, and LTS graduates form part of the community-based NSRC units. And these are the, the, the elements that will help our local governments uh, in their uh, uh, need uh, in times of uh, calamities and disasters. Ang mechanism kasi nito, uh, yung volunteerism. Kailangan pumunta ka sa iyong munisipyo or sa iyong barangay para i-rehistro that you are part of the NSRC. Uh, as I've said, we have not done that for the past 20 years. Uh, hopefully, with this new provision in the directive, it is something that we can all uh, look forward to because this is really an untapped resource that we will need uh, for any contingency. Now, kanina, may na-mention si uh, Professor uh, Medilio that uh, our disputes in the West Philippine Sea is being used uh, as a way to uh, develop nationalism in, uh, in our, uh, our good neighbor, uh, yung sa China. Now, all these discussions now about mandatory ROTC is pinag-uusapan ito. Uh, it's not my, my uh, purpose to, uh, to uh, discuss it now. But I would just like to show you some uh, some slides that will highlight uh, what what is it that the national defense program of another country is doing to prepare their young citizens. So this uh, there is a national defense education program uh, for grade grade seven and grade ten, male and female. Walang pinipiliyan. So you will just see some of the. Uh, things, uh, the programs that they do. Uh, dito sa atin, meron pa tayong issue because there are, uh, there are perceptions that we are uh, militarizing our young people at, uh, at an early age. Uh, but you will see that in another country, uh, they are already doing it because they know that there is a, this is a fight for national survival for them. And the same manner that it is for us. So uh, I think these are uh, uh, things that we have to recognize that uh, kaya yung panawagan nga namin, yung ating mga internal security problems, uh, we in the armed forces want to resolve it as early as possible because like what uh, Professor Bidilio said, there is a greater threat facing our nation and it is only through uh, our solidarity as a people that we will be able to confront this threat. So, papakita ko lang ito para... Uh, hindi naman maihambing, pero para makita natin na ang paghahanda uh, is an investment of the country in its young people and uh, our NSTP program and whatever it is that uh, uh, Congress and our uh, leaders will decide in the discussions on uh, what the citizenship program will be, uh, our armed forces will always be here to, uh, to uh, fulfill its mandate of uh, serving the people and our nation. So with that, uh, I would like to leave it here so that uh, there will be some time for question and answers later. Uh, thank you very much to uh, the organizers for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, present during this webinar series. Thank you. Thank you po. Maraming salamat po, like Colonel Puja. We would like to remind our participants in the Zoom and YouTube Live that we will have a question and answer session later. And please send in your questions and our guest speakers will answer them later. Um, we will, before we proceed to our last speaker, we will have a five-minute break po muna. Kaya kung gusto niyo po muna mag-restroom um, mag or what, um, whatever it is that you need to do, uminom at mag-inat-inat ng katawan, go lang po. Para man naman po sa mga sanay sa matagalang pag-upo, we will have a brief uh, trivia muna. Last Monday was the National Heroes Day at my post sa NSTP Diliman Office Facebook page, um, which you will find the link sa chat box na nagtatanong, sino ang bayani mo? Ngayon, itatanong ko naman po ito sa inyo. Sino nga ba ang mga bayani para sa inyo? And we would like to know what your idea of a modern day hero is. Okay, sige, simulan na rin po natin sa mga ilang pong post na nakita na po natin sa Facebook page. Aside sa mga national heroes, bayani para sa akin ang mga breadwinners ng bawat pamilya na patuloy sa pagtaguyod para sa mga mahal natin sa buhay. Hindi madali ang magpatuloy sa pagtatrabaho sa kabila ng pagtataas ng pamasahe, bilihin, 
mga kasal- ang kasalukuyang pandemya at iba't iba pang mga suliranin. Kaya naman taas tuot po akong mahangas kanila mga modern day heroes. Baka meron po tayo sa ating chat box. Baka meron gustong mag-share. Sa papo mula sa ating Facebook page. May tituring kong bayani ang aking mga magulang at mga guro sa kanilang dahil sa kanilang mga sakripisyo para magampanan ang kanilang responsibilidad sa bahay at eskwelahan. Saludo rin po ako sa mga nurse, sundalo at lahat ng mga manggagawa na natapat sa kanilang kungkulin sa bayan. Okay, habang naghihintay po tayo ng break, magbabasa po po ka ng isa pa. Marami ang may tuturing natin mga bagong bayani sa kasalukuyang panahon. Hihira mapag-usapan ngunit dapat rin pagpugayan ang mga environmental protectors at land defenders na tumataya ng kanilang buhay para lang protektahan ang patuloy na nauubos nating mga kabundukan at ipa pang mga likas na yaman sa kabila ng paniniil na ng iba't ibang grupo, maliit man o malaki. Kakulangan ng tulong ng pamahalaan at pangkalahatang kahirapan ng buhay, matapang nilang sinusuong ang panganib sa araw-araw. Masiguro lamang na may kinabukasang nagaantay sa kanilang lupang ninuno at sa mga henerasyon pang umaasa dito, kabilang na tayo. Okay. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa mga participants at mga nag-post po sa Facebook page sa ating short activity. Um, we will now continue with our webinar session. And for our final speaker for today, mula naman po sa UP Diliman, Professor Dennis Kilala is an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and the current director of the NSTP Diliman office. He is currently a PhD candidate in the Department of Political Science and International Relations of the University of Canterbury. He focuses on the study of peace processes and conflicts in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. His other research interests include political philosophy, local governance, human rights, and political violence. Professor Kilala also has published work in the book, Human Security and Cross-Border Cooperation in East Asia. Let us all welcome Professor Kilala for his presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Kat. Can we please share the, no, the presentation, please? Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to um, inform the participants that uh, Professor Herman Kraft really wanted to be part of the, um, the webinar series. Unfortunately, because of um, circumstances that are uh, are out of his control, he wasn't he he will not be able to join us. But his um we asked him to talk about uh, NSTP, the concept of human security and also of national security. So I'll try to fill in um, the, the the role that he was supposed to um, play in this webinar series. Um, next slide, please. The first slide is showing you the Tatak UPD NSTP common module in, 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 the, in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Uh, we, we usually start, just uh, today actually we're starting the implementation of the NSTP in the university. We already have classes. Uh, we already had classes this morning. So most probably they will be starting with the Tatak UPD NSTP orientation. And um, even before the CHED memo on the common module, we already had um, the, the, the directors of the NSTP then already had the framework of how to teach the um, NSTP, the top common module. This is not, it's no longer um, what you're seeing now in, on your screens. It has changed a lot, but um, the similarities of um, the, the common module before and today um, would include topics like understanding, understanding the self and others, human dignity and human rights, in gender and development po, at pinagdag po namin dyan, yun UP ASH code. We had a lecture or a module on Philippine, um, Philippine culture so that we, our students would know, um, how, would know how to be culturally sensitive. But now we integrated that to citizenship training. And our common module also includes topics um, that are in the CHED memo and in the NSTP IRR. So that would include um, the RRM, citizenship training, environmental protection, and drug education. Next slide, please. Pero siguro ang tanong natin, eh, nasaan yung national security dito? And that's going to be the question that I'll try to answer in this presentation. Baka sabihin nyo, ang, ang tigas talaga ng ulo ng UP Diliman, bakit walang discussion ng national security or walang module pala ng national security? Next slide, please. Um, there is this understanding of 
um, there are concepts that um, uh, distinguish between traditional security and non-traditional security. Partly, our uh, presenters earlier have discussed you know, the difference between traditional security and non-traditional security. Traditional security would be focusing more on the interests of the state, uh, razón de ta, um, territorial integrity, sovereignty, primarily what, you know, how do we protect the government? And in order to achieve uh, the interest of the, of, of the state, the actors that are usually involved with the government institutions, the military and the other security forces. Now, um, we have to understand this type of security, traditional security, and then um, try to understand as well the other concept, yung non-traditional security. Kasi nakakaroon ng pagbabago doon sa perception kung ano ba talaga yung security. Doon sa non-traditional security, the question is more about um, what makes citizens or human beings in general feel secure. Of course, when you are able to secure um, the interests of the state, uh, you, you keep you know, uh, territorial integrity, um, uh, you're able to protect your sovereignty, then ultimately it can lead to um, the security of, of your citizens. But it's also possible that there are differences between what is in the interest of the state and the interest of, 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 um, of the people. So non-traditional security, siguro nagsisimula siya doon sa ano ang nakakabuti sa mga mamamayan, sa mga tao. Tapos everything else would follow. Um, dito sa non-traditional security, it would also include government, military security forces, but it also includes other actors, other societal actors like, for example, the academe, uh, teachers like us, yung mga studyante natin, community at large, civil society organizations, the church. Okay? So ayun yung traditional at non-traditional security. Um, next slide, please. They're not necessarily opposed to each other, especially when the concept of human security um, was introduced. This was in the late 1990s. Um, the United Nations Development Program um, uh, introduced the concept of human security. Ngayon, uh, it can be summarized um, summarized into three elements. Na to. Freedom from fear, freedom from want, freedom to live with dignity. But the early 1990s, the way this was operationalized was different. But it, but it also evolved. Um, for example, yung pinakalas na nadagdag nila, itong freedom to live with dignity. So how does human security bring together the ideas of traditional security and, and non-traditional security? So human security, for example, if we talk about freedom from fear, then it has something to do with, um, with the things that we do in order to ensure that our people don't experience fear. So that would might probably include uh, 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 terrorist groups, as discussed by Colonel Alcudia, or external threats like um, like uh, an, a different state actor um, trying to claim our territory. We recognize um, human security recognizes the role of government, but it also recognizes the role of other societal actors. So, um, Professor Medillo, for example, earlier talked about um, the problems that we have in the West Philippine Sea. You know, he mentioned the role of government, but uh, securing it for state interest would also mean securing it for the interest, for example, of our fishermen. And uh, the security of our fishermen, for example, can be secured by the action of the state, but also by actions by other groups. At dito din pumapasok siguro yung uh, role ng NSTP, ng mga estudyante natin. Uh, at yung mga iba pang mga societal actors. Si Colonel Alcudia kanina was talking about terrorism, for example. And again, government, the military can be involved. Uh, for example, in, um, uh, in, in programs to de-radicalize our terrorist groups. But if it is of religious nature, then you do have to look at other actors, like, for example, the church and the role of the church when it comes to um, de-radicalization. So yung human security, you know, brings together, especially sa freedom from fear, it brings together non-traditional security actors and also traditional security actors. Um, freedom from want would be, um, would be talking about uh, having access to potable water. 
having affordable electricity. Siguro ngayon, importante na rin yung access sa internet, housing, food. No? Yan yung mga bagay na kinakailangan meron tayo para magkaroon tayo ng freedom from one. So basically, economic um, uh, economic factors. Pero pwede rin siyang social, moral uh, na mga factors as well. Tapos yung freedom to live with dignity, I think the, um, the United Nations would like to emphasize that um, aside from freedom from fear and freedom from want, It's re-emphasizing its um, original role in trying to protect um, every human being's um, human rights in order for them to have human dignity. So the concept of human security seems to fuse together um, two different concepts, traditional security and non-traditional security. And it's quite interesting that you can use human security in order to understand um, national security. Next slide, please. In the case of the Philippines, I don't think we have problems understanding the concept of national security, especially in the you know, especially if you're, you'll be using a human security lens. If you look at the national security policy during the Aquino administration and the national security policy of the Duterte administration, you will be able to see some um, some similar similarities. And we are awaiting for the national security policy also of um, the current administration. Next slide, please. Um, at least for the national security policy, and this, already, this was already mentioned by um, Professor Medillo earlier, um, national security is defined as a state or condition wherein the people's welfare and well-being, freedom from um, wants. Um, ways of life, pwede sigurong freedom from want pa rin yun. Government and institutions, freedom from fear. Territorial integri- integrity, freedom from fear. Sovereignty, freedom from fear. And core values are enhanced and protected. Freedom from fear, freedom from um, wants as well. Next slide, please. And what's also interesting about uh, the national security policy would be looking again at the uh, 12-point national security agenda of the previous administrations. You have clearly items here that are um, part of traditional security, but you also have items here that are are clearly non-traditional security, but all of them can be considered part of ensuring our human security in order for us to be in a state of human security. So let me, let, let, me, let me discuss just some examples. Next slide, please. So for example, military and border security seems very uh, traditional security, but, uh, a traditional security concern. You're talking about government, you're talking about um, national sovereignty, you're talking about um, core security sectors enhancing our military and border security. Next slide, please. Maritime airspace security, again, um, very uh, a concept that is very much uh, linked with, um, with, with traditional security. Next slide, please. Pero meron ka din na mga non-traditional security na mga elements, like for example, food and water security, like what I mentioned earlier. To a certain extent, you would have the role of um, government here, maybe later on. But as of now, You know, as of now, you would probably be looking at the roles um, of the private sector. In Metro Manila, for example, when it comes to water security, uh, it's the private sector trying to uh, ensure that we would have access to potable water. Hindi na siya government, hindi din siya civil society organization. It is a private um, organization ensuring that we would have water in, you know, in our faucets. Yung potable water pa natin, nakukuha pa natin sa mga refilling stations, for example. Millions or thousands of refilling stations ensure uh, water security, for example, in Metro Manila. Next slide, please. Um, social cultural sense, uh, security is also very interesting. Kasi sabi dito, it heightens, uh, we should have heightened consciousness and pride on the, Filipi- on, on the Filipino heritage and values, strengthen and preserve them from unintended destructions and violence. the threat and the integrity of our nation and the character of our democracy. Um, uh, for me, I wanted to highlight this because I remember um, one activity from our NSTP class. You know, it's, um, from, it's a class from the Asian Institute of Tourism. And the students were documenting, this was during the pandemic, they were documenting um, cultural artifacts. And it seems like that activity 
can contribute to our social culture um, security. So they're documenting this social, uh, this um, cultural artifacts, and they get um, published. You know, the, the, our students get published. Next slide, please. Um, another interesting, uh, I think, element of the security agenda of the previous administration, something to do with information on cybersecurity. The reason why I'm um, I'm highlighting this because um, if you if you look at it, the role of the government is very much highlighted. Um, that is very important. Probably you have to look at the role of the DICT, the role of the um, uh, of the AFP is probably very important when it comes to this. But I think it's also important for us to look at the roles of the private sector when it comes to um, when it comes to inf um, cybersecurity, the roles of schools that offer IT courses. Sa tingin ko yung mga, you know, yung mga experts pagdating dyan, eh doon natin makikita. Tapos kapag tinignan mo yan, parang hindi lang talaga military yung um, makikitaan mo ng role pagdating dito. Makikitaan mo dyan ng role yung mga engineering students natin, mga engineering graduates natin, mga comsci um, students natin, comsci graduates natin. Minsan nga sinasabi ko, pagdating dito sa cybersecurity, we are always in the defense. Now we're always thinking about how to defend ourselves, but there is a lot of potential when it comes to cyber offense as well, um, especially here in the Philippines. Um, next slide, please. So I'll go back to the question that I posed earlier in my presentation. Nasaan ba yung national security? Si Professor Kraft po talaga yung, ano, yung isa sa mga mastermind nito sa UP Diliman. Uh, for him, okay, for him, he... Um, he told us that it is possible to use national security not just as a common module topic, but as a framework to look at um, the NSTP. So, yung tatak yung the NSTP orientation po namin is slash national security din po yan. Uh, understanding it as the non-traditional and traditional uh, security, human security po na concept kasi it binds everything together. It binds all of the um, the elements of our NSTP common module sa UP din naman. So, kaya din po sinimulan namin ang Bayanian series sa national security kasi mahalagang aspeto po ang national security pagdating sa pagtuturo po namin ng, ng NSTP sa UP din naman. Next slide, please. Um, and again, uh, yeah, so yung NSTP Act of 2001, the Declaration of Policy po, ano, sabi doon, it is hereby affirmed that the prime duty of the government to serve and protect its citizens. In turn, it shall be the responsibility of all students, uh, of all citizens to defend security of the state and in fulfillment thereof, the government may require each citizen to render personal, military, or civil service. Um, NSTP Act of 2001 po ito, pero tama po din sabi ni Sir, uh, Colonel Alcudia kanina na this is the 20th year because the, the law was signed in 2002. Um, I think we do have to realize that the NSTP, because for a very long time, I think we've been doing it in order to comply, you know, for compliance, kasi kailangan gumraduate ng mga estudyante natin. However, um, our students can contribute to national security. Yung mga graduates po natin can contribute to national security, be it as a member of the Citizen Armed Force. Graduate po, medyo matanda na po ako, so graduate po talaga ako ng ROTC, kaya sa Citizen Armed Force po ako. Um, tapos, pero yung mga estudyante po natin na graduate na CWTS and LTS, they can become productive members of the National Service Reserve Corps after they graduate um, from the NSTP. Next slide, please. So, um, i-affirm ko lang po yung, ano, let, yung sinasabi ko kanina pa about the bayanihan, about the collaboration po. No? Kasi in pursuit of these goals, the youth, the most valuable resource of the nation shall be motivated, trained, organized, and mobilized in military training literacy, civil welfare, and other similar endeavors in service of the nation. Um, again, I know that we are implementing this um, per institution, pero po, I think, uh, given the challenges that were presented by Professor Medillo uh, and uh, the challenges that Colonel Alcudia uh, were, uh, that, that, that they presented earlier, parang mas maganda po kung meron tayong collective response doon isang bayanihan po na response pagdating doon sa mga security threats na meron tayo. And it's not only just the traditional security threats, but it also involves the non-traditional security threats. Um, 
Meron pa po ba tayong maiinom na tubig at paano ba natin masasecure yung mga uh, dams natin, yung mga um, mga lakes natin kasi madami din po tayong mga lakes na polluted na. Um, again, uh, a call, no, a call for a united front, a bayanihan for uh, the resolution of issues that are presented to us. And again, the NSTP I think can do a lot of things when it comes to um, um, issues that are presented to us as a as a bayan, as a community. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kat. Transfer ko na sa iyo. Once again, thank you very much, Paul, Dr. Uh, Director Kilala. And thank you very much to our speakers, Professor Robert Joseph Menino from the National Defense College of the Philippines, Colonel Ronald Jess Alcudio from the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Service and Retiree Affairs, J9 of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and of course, direct, uh, Director Dennis Kilala from the NSTP Diliman Office in the College of Social Science and Philosophy, UP Diliman. I'm sure our participants learned a lot from our speakers and have questions for them. Um, let us now invite back our speakers for the question and answer. And we will be reading the questions sent in the Zoom registration and chat box from the YouTube live chat. Okay, so... Um, yes, so are uh, we... Um, inviting po, um, Professor Medillo. Yan. So one of our um, Zoom participants have directed this question, a question for Professor Medillo. Sir, how is it possible to visit such places in this time of crisis and a great responsibility lies to the instructors? Isn't it very dangerous and risky on our part? Yeah, okay. Well, ideally, um, you have to convince your, your school no, that uh, there has to be, uh, that they should provide uh, yung mga logistical needs and transportation. Uh, doon sa safety, um, I think, because here in, in NDCP, we conduct field visits then, but of course, adult learners sila. No, but you can actually coordinate with uh, local government units, kung ano ba yung mga... Um, as health and safety uh, protocols and standards na i-require nila and then you prepare um kung talagang hindi kaya um uh, i think um you can have a virtual uh, field visits we did this also during the height of the pandemic okay so um it, it's just a matter of organization no you gather these people in in one place and then um you you engage with them you discuss with them uh, through a uh, virtual platform. It can also be done. The, the important thing here is for you to uh, be able to interact with them. Usually, it would start with a briefing from the respective uh, local government unit and then magkakaroon ng Q&A or sharing of insights and experiences from uh, the members of that particular community. Yeah. So I think that can be done also if talagang hesitant pa kayo to go into places. Thank you po, Professor Medillo. Um, um, isa pa pong question ang pumasok para naman po kay Colonel Alcudia. Um, the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges has not started yet to organize the NSRC in their campuses. In the case of UA or the University of Antique, I was informed that we still need the approval of the Board of Regents to have this organized. Kailangan pa ba ng approval ng BOR dahil nakastipulate naman ito sa NSTP law and even in the new IRR. Uh, Ma'am, I'm still fixing my video. I'm sorry. no. Uh, but okay. it is not in the implementing rules and regulations. It is not in the law itself, but it's in the revised implementing rules and regulations. So uh, I think the right agency to address this will be the Commission on Higher Education when it comes up with the commit shared memorandum order on the implementation of the revised IRR. Now, uh, another, yung sa, ano naman, yung sa school-based NSRC unit, uh, there is a national defend, national disaster reduction management uh, council memorandum regarding that, yung creation ng ating, uh, ng ating uh, school-based and community-based uh, NSRC unit. Now I understand that there is a uh, there is autonomy given to our 
higher education institutions. So our uh, the different board of regents might, uh, I do not know the governance mechanisms that go with that, kung kailangan pang dumaan sa kanila. Uh, but I would like to uh, recommend uh, maybe our uh, Commission on Higher Education to uh, address the issue uh, dahil uh, yung isa pa po na gusto naming i-highlight na sa IRR natin is uh, what we call the Joint Committee. In the IRR, merong Joint Committee wherein the members are the AFP, the OCD, CHED, and TESDA. And these are replicated at the regional, province, and the chartered city level. So, yun po yung mechanisms natin para mapatupad po yung ating uh, programa. Uh, uh, pero yun nga po, I do not know if the Board of Regents of the different universities will still need to approve it. Thank you po. I think this also applies to some questions from other units as well. Um, this one po is for Professor Kilala. Talking about national security, how do we reconcile the fact that the Philippine president once declared in a public forum that he wants the Philippines to be a part of China or for an incoming president to thank China for its help in, in the election? And this is not a joke though. Kasama po yung message nila. It shapes our foreign policy. Ayun, siguro, um, what... Sa tingin ko si ano, Sir Bedilio mas makakasagot nito. Pero ang sa akin siguro, uh, again, maybe we have to go back to whatever is in the interest of the people. And probably it's not, that's, not the, you know, that's not what is in the interest of the people nor, nor the state. And um, maybe that's, just, that's going to be a good part of the discussion as well when it comes to this issue. So yun, yun, that, that's the best way I could answer that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, sige, para naman po to sa lahat na lang din po. So, gaano ba katatag dapat daw bago tayo ay masabing handa? Yan. This is a general question for all our um, our panel, our guest part, um, speakers for today. Sige po. Um, would you like to start po, Professor Kilala? Sige po. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> hindi ko alam ko, hindi ko kasi alam kung ako ba yung nag ano din nag post din ng question na yan pero uh, that's also one of the things that we I would be giving it to our resource speakers no? kasi okay. uh, basically that's also one of the questions that we are asking um, our resource speakers uh, the NSTP law is asking us to prepare our students and also to prepare our nation when it comes to uh, inga, civic consciousness would be there Pero sinasabi din kasi doon yung national preparedness nga. Ano ba yung indicators natin? Again, we 20 years na no, 20 years na yung ano yung NSTP law um, since it has been signed. How do we know what will be our indicators that that uh, that our NSTP graduates would contribute to national preparedness? How do we operationalize the concept of uh, national preparedness? So bibigay ko na lang yun Ms. Kat sa mga ano natin na sa mga experts natin sa security sector. Sige po, habang hinahantay natin bumalik din si Colonel Alcuda, may we have the, uh, Professor Medilla po to answer? Um, determinants, paano natin masasabing handa na tayo? Well, I can speak only uh, with regard to, yun nga, eh, ating external security. Well, number one, yung importance ng education. Eh. Um, again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Uh, when it comes to the South China Sea dispute, we have to educate and instill, inculcate to the youth our identity as a maritime nation. Um, kasi parang when we talk about these issues, parang we think that this is something far from our everyday lives. No, parang we think that, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we think that this is a high politics issue that only bureaucrats, diplomats, uh, state uh, leaders uh, only discuss. No, But uh, in reality, uh, in one way or another, uh, merong effect yun dun sa ating araw-araw na pamumuhay. And hindi lang doon sa environmental and economic aspects ng ating pamumuhay, pati yung ating very identity as a nation. So kailangan maipaunawa muna doon sa mga kabataan na maritime nation tayo, na ang ating uh, pangunahing interes ay masiguro na we are able to monitor, uh, preserve, and when needed, defend. Okay? our maritime borders. Kasi kapag hindi, it means that we we are uh, we allowed to destroy our uh, national identity. 
no so i think education first and secondly um i think uh, this may be unpopular to others but i think it's really time to uh, really uh, implement yung mandatory rotc and i would uh, this is my bias because uh, my my line of research is really on uh, south china sea maritime security I would really advocate that um, in, in, in mandatory ROTC, we really uh, focus on our uh, naval doctrines, naval strategy, okay, the importance of acquiring uh, naval technology and training our youth no, uh, in, in, in case needed. No? Because in nga, volatile lang ating external environment. Uh, we are an archipelago. So I think uh, we should... No, if we if we uh, try to uh, bring back mandatory ROTC, I think I would advocate personally that the path will be towards that. The target is really towards external security. No, must mag focus tayo doon. because I think sooner or later, yung these issues discussed by uh, the other speaker would be uh, hopefully resolved. No, kasi hindi naman talaga yun yung ating uh, uh, pangunahing uh, national security problem na kailangan i-address. And I think so far, uh, unti-unti nang nagkakaroon ng gains ng mga efforts to address internal security issues. So I think uh, just in time, we are now talking about mandatory ROTC and the world becomes very more, very much more complex and uh, delicate and, 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 and uh, volatile. So I think dapat doon natin tahiin yung uh, pangangailangan sa mandatory ROTC dapat towards doon sa pangangalaga sa pagprotekta and sa pagdefend ng ating national uh, territory. Kasi yun nga, sabi ni Colonel Kalina, it's about the survival of the nation. Okay? And much worse, uh, yun nga, we are a maritime nation. So if, if we're not prepared, if we will not go to that uh, path, then uh, parang magiging, no, in the words of General Luna doon sa movie, no, parang magiging uh, alabok tayo no, na mawawala yung ating uh, identity and yung ating uh, existence no, dito sa international community. So I think uh, th that's my indicator of handa tayo no, in terms of uh, external security. And thank you so, so much. Yeah, in short, education. education. And then I, I think yung uh, bringing back yung mandatory ROTC exactly. towards you know, external security. Towards external security. Thank you for the clarification. Um, siguro, idagdag na lang din natin dun dahil medyo nasagot na rin ni Professor Medillo. Um, how does this partner, the NSTP, contribute to the defense preparedness? Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot, uh, hindi ko na ano yung aking video, no? Uh, may I have the question again, ma'am, please? Sige, balik ko rin po yung unang question, sir, na nasagot din na rin po ni Professor Medillo. Gaano katatag dapat bago tayo masabing handa? Uh, sa ating armed forces, meron po tayong tinatawag na, uh, I'm talking about the modernization program of the AFP. Uh, ngayon po, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, minimum credible deterrence. Uh, that is what we hope to achieve, meaning we have the capability to uh, deter any threat that uh, uh, challenges our territorial integrity and sovereignty. Now, of course, uh, kailangan po niyan, that is a uh, that is a very resource intensive uh, aspiration. But uh, aside from that, we also need to leverage on our alliances with our allies. Uh, at isa po yan sa mga reasons, katulad kaninang sinabi nga po ni uh, ni uh, Professor uh, Medillo, uh, there is a, a a message by which our president made his first state visit to our neighbors here in ASEAN. Uh, there is also that uh, importance of having a strong partnership with uh, other nations in uh, preserving uh, security in our region. Uh, but for the AFP, uh, tuloy tuloy po ang ating uh, equipment acquisition and also the training of our personnel pagdating po dito sa ating uh, defense preparedness. Uh, kanina na may mention po ni uh, Professor Medillo yung tungkol dito sa ating uh, mandatory ROTC. Kung nakikita niyo po, wala akong picture but uh, the sign that you will see is the 
Naval Forces Eastern Mindanao. Uh, I'm here right now in uh, Davao. This is our unit. This is the unit of the Armed Forces that is uh, securing our seas in this part of the Philippines. Uh, I agree with him that we really need to have a strong Navy. We are a maritime nation. Uh, and we also develop the capabilities for uh, uh, maritime domain awareness kasama po yan ng ating uh, Philippine Air Force. And of course, the other armed for other uh, uniform services natin like our Philippine Coast Guard. Uh, so yung kahandaan po is a uh, continuing aspiration of our national government. Uh, kasama na po dyan, itong uh, thrust natin ngayon on uh, maybe not really mandatory ROTC kasi hindi pa natin alam ko nung kakalabasan yan sa mga usapin. But really the development of a strong reserve force. Not just a military reserve force but a civilian reserve force that can help in any contingency. Uh, Na-mention po yan ng ating Pangulo in his State of the Nation address. It is a force for nation building and for risk-related situations uh, wherein the involvement of the citizenry is needed. Uh, yun po ang uh, aspiration at yun po siguro ang kasukatan ng kahandaan na ating uh, uh, gustong maabot. Ayan, thank you po. Sige. Uh, meron po tayong um, dagdag na katanungan. Pasahin ko lang po sa nalay. Galing din po ito sa ating participant. Um, para po kay Professor Medillo yung question. Sir, it's not that I'm against mandatory ROTC, but why offer it in the grades 11 and 12? Why not offer it in the tertiary level just like before? Pwede rin po siguro ang sagutin ito ni um, Colonel Alcudia. Yes, po. Uh, ako po muna ang sasagot? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, think, uh, kasi mahaba yung dalawa yung versions ngayon. No? Uh, may mga nakafile na bill na ito ay sa high school, 11 and 12, at meron naman sa tertiary level. Pero kung babalikan po natin, ang national, ang ROTC, uh, marami kasing may hindi alam ho siguro nito, no? Yung C doon sa dulo, hindi ho yun course. Hindi ho yun C-O-U-R-S-E. The C is a core. C-O-R-P-S. And what does that mean? I, it, 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 I do not want to think of it as a one or two year program. It, it is the development of a core leaders who will lead our people in the event of any contingency. That's why uh, one of the discussion points right now of the AFP is uh, yung aming advanced course. Uh, alam po nila ng ating mga schools ito. No? We have a advanced ROTC. Yung mga nag-graduate ng ating basic ROTC, if they decide to pursue a two-year voluntary program, yun po yung ating advanced ROTC. Yun ang totoong ROTC. Because it's only when you undergo that program where you become a reserve officer. So uh, we are also reviewing, katulad po ng sinabi ni uh, uh, Professor Medillo, the reforms and the review of the program are uh, ongoing. Uh, this is a directive of our uh, Senior Undersecretary of uh, the Department of National Defense. Uh, ano ba ang, ang tawag kasi namin yan, program of instruction sa inyo po, curriculum guide data or uh, syllabus. Uh, we want to tailor our training to meet the current operational requirements uh, of our armed forces. So uh, initially, may mga nasabi na nga po dyan, we, we want to have a program in high school. It may not be a, uh, a uh, reserve program, pero kami, product kami of the school na meron kaming CAT nung araw, na nawala, unfortunately. Uh, it, is one, it was designed not to make uh, a... Uh, a nation under arms. It was a, a training to make our uh, students resilient, uh, to make them uh, responsive, and other values that uh, are needed by our country right now. So, uh, depending upon yan sa pag-uusap pag na nangyayari. But uh, I do not see it as an either-or case. We can have a citizenship program in high school as a preparatory training for the tertiary level where we will have a continuing training for uh, civil defense and military preparedness. 
um if if i may add lang doon sa ano yeah sure. i think um yung 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 nag na, yung nagse-stop kasi from other groups no and sectors is that in yung notion that we are militarizing our youth but we have to think back eh, no what's wrong with you know exposing them to a uh, military discipline no i think it it goes back to the you know negative uh, view or notion about the military kasi i, I can only speak uh, based on my experience no when you talk about military skills and i think maybe this should this can be uh, part of the reforms of rotc hindi lang talaga siya combat eh. correct me uh, sir uh, no if 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 if, uh, no, if i'm wrong no but when you talk about military training hindi lang siya combat it's not always fighting no and daming skills that the youth can can get no from military training na pwedeng i-apply even sa kanyang pang-araw-araw na buhay no kahit mag-decide siya na to pursue the military uh, profession uh, private sector or what magagamit pa rin niya eh. no and daming skills like intelligence gathering yung logistics yung planning i i i work with Uh, military officers here in NDCP and have seen how you know they are really effective no, in terms of logistics and planning and all and I think uh, this is universal eh? this is something that you can use uh, elsewhere okay kahit hindi siya sa military so I think I think that's how we can no for the lack of better term sell or promote our OTC no even management uh, skills uh, matututunan nila dito eh the part ng military training eh, yung discipline and all so i think ang daming pwedeng ma-acquire na, na na skills and and ano uh, yung ating mga kabataan dito sa ROTC as long as this will be part of 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 the reforms i'm not sure how it was conducted or implemented before but i think that's how we can um uh design no the ROTC program in, in the present time again as a uh, someone who will be planning our program we will be looking back at the mandate you know the mandate given to us sabing ano national defense preparedness and uh, in order to achieve that because it seems that it's one of the goals Siyempre may iba pang goals, yeah, civic consciousness and all that. But if the goal would be national defense preparedness, and the re- this is the reason why I ask, you know, what what would be our indicators? And then the way towards that would be ROTC, maybe more on the ROTC. What should be they what should they be learning in basic ROTC in order for us to ensure that we will be um, prepared? Kasi ang ang ginagamit nating ano, ang ginagamit natin na Um, reason why we have to be nationally prepared or uh, defense prepared is because of China, because of the external threats and all of that. But if, for example, I'll just give an example. I think we give an example that in the Philippines. I think you can do that by, if you look at the example of um, Switzerland, they will be undergoing military training, and when they get back home, they will be um, bringing with them a rifle. Why? Because that's going to be, I think, a good example for a good indicator that they will be able to defend the country once they get into that point. Pero sa atin kasi, the way we, you know, we we plan the program that we have right now, and then it's given to the schools as well. I'm not quite sure if we're getting to the right direction of being defense prepared. And if it's going to be the non-combat skills as well, baka naman we can learn that in the school, pero hindi siya ROTC. I mean, it, you know, map reading can be learned without the military involved, for example. Um, civic consciousness can be learned without uh, involving the military. So, yun lang po yung sa akin. Uh, and, and hopefully nga po, and one of the reasons why we want this, kaya po ano na tawag namin dito is katapag. Katatagan, no? Katatagan. Paano ba natin talaga malalaman na matatag na tayo with our, with our ROTC component for sa NST? Thank you, Pop. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Professor. Yung kanina pong napag-usapan tungkol dito sa uh, anong klaseng training yung meron tayo. Uh, kung babalikan po natin ang ating kasaysayan, itong ROTC, ang ugat po nito ay si 1935 when we had the National Defense Act. 
And during that time, we, have, we were on a wartime preparation. Uh, we were still under the Commonwealth government then. Kaya yung ating paghahanda noon ay really for, uh, for uh, war. Kaya nga di ba ang nangyari noon yung ating mga ROTC cadets na, na kahit na pinauwi na sila ng kanilang mga skwelahan, uh, ginamit nila ang kanilang kakayahan para mag-lead ng ating mga guerrilla units. Now, uh, part of the direction right now, nasabi naman po ito ng ating Pangulo, is the review of that National Defense Act. Kasi masyado na siyang matagal, marami ng pagbabago sa ating, uh, sa ating kapaligiran, sa, uh, sa regional security natin. So, uh, at the armed forces level, yes, we're looking at not just military training. Uh, in fact, yung, yung ginagawa po natin na mga pag-aaral kasi, uh, Some would say na dapat para tayo Israel or para Singapore or South Korea. But, uh, but we have such a big population that uh, our resources will not be able to match the, the reserve force, the mobilization programs that we have. But we can have our own to suit uh, what we can afford. Uh, and it, it is not uh, only through, uh, through the military means, no? yung marunong ka ng Oh, basic infantry, kasi yun yung ating ROTC, paano ka maging sundalo yung, yung foot soldier kung maka. But uh, our citizens can help that uh, by our preparedness through other concerns. Like kung nga rin yung coastal, yung sinasabi ni uh, Professor Medillo, we have a big coastline, the awareness, the security of that, uh, and things that uh, prevent us from really thriving. Yung mga humihila sa ating pababa. Uh, na mga problema natin that prevent us from modernizing our armed forces, uh, growing our economy, uniting our people. Yun yung mga kailangan natin address. And uh, we do not, uh, true, we do not need to all be uh, uh, soldiers. Kaya nga, di ba, sa pinakita doon, uh, the, the nation, the government can compel military, civic, or personal service. We have different ways of contributing to our nation. But of course, we really need to have a core of, uh, of trained individuals na kapag dumating yung pangangailangan, kaya niyang, uh, kaya niyang uh, ipagtanggol ng ating bansa. At uh, in the meantime, that, that is not uh, present. Ang kanya ngayon ginagawa is uh, training others, uh, building on uh, what is existing. And uh, tama po kayo, even in the curriculum that we are developing now, it's not It's not so much of the drills that really uh, parang para kasi na doon na no, eh, na, na, na tahi doon yung uh, perception ng ating mga kabataan about the ROTC. It's really about skills training and it's not really for one to have uh, in military as a profession but it's a leadership and a citizenship program that will prepare you for whatever endeavor you decide to pursue. Yeah. Is there anything you wish to add for Professor Medillo? Uh, not, nothing more. I just, I totally agree with uh, what uh, uh, Sir uh, has said. Uh, yeah. Thank you then, Colonel Akuda. I think um, it was a good um, ending hopefully for our participants. And I'm sure that our participants have more questions, but are, unfortunately that this is all the time that we have for today. If you have any more questions though, you may send them directly to our, our speakers. We hope, uh, we hope to give you their um, contact or their email and you can direct your questions to them. Okay, so um, before ending this, we would like to present our certificate of appreciation to our speakers. Professor Robert, uh, Robert Joseph Medillo and Colonel Ronald Jess Alcudia for today's session, Katatagan, a webinar on national security. May I request our speakers to please turn on again your mic, uh, your camera, well, um, um, for the presentation of certificate. And, um, um, it could, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, the certificate is First, given to um, Professor Robert Joseph Medillo, if you can have it. And picture, <laughs> picture, picture, pumuna. <laughs> Ayan. Okay, na po batek. Thank you. Next po is for Colonel Ronald Jess Alcudia. And to sir. Picture. 
picture picture po ulit. Ayan. Um, again, um, we encourage our participants. Thank you very much, Prof. Colonel Alcudia and Professor Medillo, and also for um, Dr. Uh, Professor Kilala. Um, we encourage also our participants to open their cameras. You can take up the picture again. Um, yeah, to open po. Our tech would be doing um, the picture picture again <laughs> para sa ating lahat. Ayan, sige. Again, while taking a picture, um, we thank you again for coming and joining us for today's session, Katatagan and National Security. Be ready po tayo. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Po po. One, two, three. Last po. One, two, and three. Okay, thank you po. Thank you. Um, reminders lang po, that concludes our today's webinar. Thank you again to our speakers and all our participants on Zoom and YouTube Live. For those who missed or would like to revisit today's sessions, you can watch it on UP Diliman NSTP's YouTube channel. Just look for NSTP Diliman on YouTube. For a few reminders, magkikita kita po tayo ulit para naman sa Bayanihan webinar session on Kahandaan, which is about PRRM on Monday, October 10 and Kalikasan for Environmental Protection on Monday, also October 17. To our participants, please don't forget to accomplish the evaluation form. The link is on the screen, and that is bit.ly bit uh, slash katatagan evaluation. The evaluation form will be accepting responses until Tuesday, September 6, until 5 p.m. Please also make sure na tama po ang details niyo for the, uh, for the certificate before submitting. Ako po muli si Catherine Tagaman at maraming salamat po sa pagdala. Thank you. Huwag mong iasa sa iba kung di sa iyo at sa akin ang simula ng pagbabago. Panahon na para bumangon at paikutin muli Nang tama ang mundo Suliranin ng ating lipunan Unti-unting magagawa ng paraan Sa bagong siglo na ito Nang ating mga buhay Tayo'y magsama-sama Bigyang liwanag ang daan Maging gabay sa lipunan Kailangan ng iyong kamay Halika na kapwa Pilipino Halika na kapwa Isko at iska Taas kamay ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubok Huwag kang susuko Bigyan ang boses ang sigaw ng masa Ang bagong pag-asa ay Mula sa iyo Sa sakip sa mamamayan Mula sa kahirapan Halika na Kapwa mandirigma Magtagumpay Kapwa isko at piska Taas kamay Ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubok Huwag kang susubok Bigyan ang boses Ang sigaw ng masa Ang bagong pag- Bye.
Yeah.